think that it will look good on absolutely anybody. And I mean anybody. This is going to look on anybody as pale as you are, as dark as you are, light eyes, brown eyes. This is going to look good on everybody. I can't believe I'm sitting here right now. I have been thinking about what I'm going to say in this video for literally over a year. Like, I like to take baths, like once a week I'll take like a bubble bath. And when I sit in my bubble bath, I always think about this video. Like, what I'm gonna say, and just how I'm going to convey to you, like, the I'm actually filming this video right now! Like, ah! I have a memory that stands out to me in 2015, in my shower, in my old condo, remember washing my hair out loud, like reciting what I was gonna say in this video. Because I thought that this brand was gonna launch at the end of 2015 for a holiday. And I remember out loud being like, hey guys, it's finally here! And here we are, 2019, and it's finally here. You start thinking I'm being nice, or um, because a lot of times people are like, you're not saying the truth, and it's like, well, no, I am saying the truth. It's just I know when to call a spade a spade. I'm not going to sit here and trash this entire palette just because I had some trouble with the mattes. Do I think that it was not good? Of course, you saw the trouble that I was dealing with on camera. Do I wish that the green was more cooperative? Absolutely, but. What you're getting is a $15. I just want to put that out there before even jumping in to the actual video so that you guys know that I'm not going to run away from this. And I know it's taken me a couple days to get all my ducks in a row and get this video out for you guys, but I've been going through all the documentation and on the phone with labs and chemists and the owner of my lab and my entire team for several days and doing a very in-depth investigation to figure out exactly what's going on so that I can give you the most informed information as a brand. I have a brand called All Things Co's. I did not create the cozy aesthetic by any means. And there's definitely enough pie for everybody. Like, I don't know what this brand even is supposed to be at this point. Like, if it's going to be a huge lifestyle brand, Brand umbrella like I've created that's awesome if it's just merchandise that's also awesome like cozy comforting wear that's also awesome uh, but do you mind maybe just going by any other name and again I mean this was not launched at this point there was a post from July I just hi everyone it's me again and squish gang is present and today we have an absolute monster of a video, so much so that you get my glasses today because I have to read so much stuff that I need to be able to see. <laughs> because if not, I'm gonna have to edit out a whole bunch of stutters and me not being able to see. Also, before we get into anything, the claims of this video are, say it with me audience, hypothetical, alleged in Minecraft. All of the claims in this video are, Hypothetical alleged in Minecraft. <coughs> my voice cracked. Any hoozles. We are going to be doing another installment of my The Rhetoric series. In particular, we are going to be talking about beauty influencer slash boss babe cringe idol of my life sarcasm, Jacqueline Hill. But first, links, sources, Amazon, Patreon, ways to support the channel, including channel memberships, uh, affiliate links, or anything like that down below including, and this will come up later, my my code and link for Gerard Cosmetics. And the reason why is that Gerard Cosmetics and Jen Gerard end up coming up in this story and is someone that Jaclyn Hill no longer has necessarily the greatest relationship with, hypothetically, allegedly, in Minecraft. So I actually wore a lot of Gerard Cosmetics only because like I thought it would be kind of cheeky and fun to do so, you know? Because I don't have any makeup geek because that would be like the ultimate like double cross slay. So for those of you who are new to the channel, the rhetoric of series is not like a full history of someone. Rather, it's diving into specific aspects and controversies that they've had and unpacking what specific rhetorical elements and rhetoric and stuff like that means like persuasion and audience interaction and stuff like that. We're unpacking specific aspects of that throughout their careers. So if you want like an overall history of Jaclyn Hill, I would recommend Smokey Close the Evolution of Jaclyn Hill uh, and other videos like that. There are tons of them. That's not exactly what this is, but we'll go through a good amount of her history regardless. There will be three parts of the video. Part one, who is Jaclyn Hill? Well, we'll do a short kind of summary of who Jaclyn Hill is. Part two, Jaclyn Hill addressing controversy specifically. And part three, Jaclyn Hill's relationship of, with her audience, which more or less is as a result of this of the way that she addresses controversy. However, before we get into all of that, I would like to thank this video's sponsor, Aura. Anyone can find your personal information online, including your legal name, phone number, emails, and even the information of your loved ones. This information is accessible because of data brokers who sell your information online. Aura is a US-based service that helps you manage your online security. And despite being from Canada, I've gone through what this 
process is and what the service offers. And I really wanted to be able to offer it to you all with my link. And I understand there's been some questions about why I would necessarily promote something that I can't exactly use because it does have a credit section that allows for you to input your social insurance number so you can monitor your credit. However, I really wish I had a service like this as someone who has been hacked before and for someone who seeks these types of services for data security. I want to clarify that as well while we're here. So or will identify data brokers that are exposing your information and will automatically opt you out of requests on your behalf. And recently I was also email bombed, which is something that if I had Aura that would opt me out of things would have been again, very useful. Instead of me having to personally opt out of 300 emails, they'll even opt, opt you out of junk mail and telemarketer lists. So you can, again, you can use my link that's right there, aura.com slash Mika's rhetoric, or so you can try Aura for two weeks and see how many brokers are sharing your information. If you are wondering too, the link is also in the description. Aura will also monitor emails and passwords and any data breaches, exposures, the security things that you need to look into if there's something that has been leaked. Because Aura's app also includes VPNs, passwords, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, as well as malware protection. It has almost every single internet security like tool that you could possibly need, but all in one place. With a link in the description, uh, aura.com slash Mika's rhetoric, you can start your free two week trial and you'll be shocked at how many people have access to your information. As someone who has been hacked, as I said, and email bombed and the whole nine, these services are so helpful and so amazing. Rather than having to have like 10 different things, Aura will allow you to put it all into one place. Thank you again, Aura, for sponsoring this channel. And I'm really happy to have worked with you these past few months. Now let's get right into the video. All right, into the meat and potatoes. Holy Moses, we're really getting into it today. That was the most Canadian <laughs> was the most Canadian I've ever sounded in my life. So Jacqueline Hill is a beauty YouTuber, formerly Jacqueline Ehlers. I will write it on the screen because I don't know how to pronounce that. And it's formerly from Mineral, Illinois. This is the Canadian thing again. If I'm pronouncing any of these wrong, I apologize in advance. And later she moved to Florida. Her father was an evangelist, evangelical preacher type, and would move the family around the United States to kind of do preacher stuff. And her father got divorced in 2012, and Jacqueline became estranged from her father after the divorce. Jacqueline Hill was also homeschooled and attended one semester of college for photography prior to dropping out. Jacqueline Hill then began to work for Mac Cosmetics and began posting in YouTube to YouTube in 2011, while she was uh, seemingly while she was working as an artist for Mac. Jacqueline Hill was one of the first influencers also who would work with brands. Her first collaboration, or one of her first ones rather, being with Becca, Drawer Cosmetics, and Sigma. And the one with Becca was the infamous Champagne Pop Highlighter. She had multiple Morphe co collaborations as well. Obviously, the, there was the Jaclyn Hill Volumes 1 and 2. There was also the Vault Collection, which we'll get into later. And something that a lot of people forgot of, which was called Jaclyn Hill's Favorites, which was kind of a curated set of Morphe single shadows that she liked the most. In May 2019, Jaclyn Hill announced that she would be starting her brand at Jaclyn Cosmetics, with a range of bullet lipsticks with neutral tones. This sparked major controversy because of production issues, but we'll discuss that in part two. Another thing that I realized upon researching that and actually put in my notes is her starting with a range of bullet lipsticks in a neutral tone was quite bizarre because that was often a lot of her collaborations. She had a collaboration with Gerard Cosmetics. This is what the bullet would look like. Similar to this sort of tone, but like a little bit lighter. And I just think it was interesting to kind of launch with something so similar, but that's just me being shady. So I love being shady. The brand Jaclyn Cosmetics then went on hiatus for two years following her next release in 2021. Jaclyn also divorced from husband John Hill in 2018, but seems to have kept the name at least publicly, but got engaged to Jordan Tory, I believe, in December of 2021. Given the vast slew of controversies that Jacqueline has faced throughout her career, she has generated a reputation online for being someone who responds to criticism poorly, is dishonest, and is primarily driven by income and just kind of somewhat of an overall dishonest person, especially by commentary and drama channels who she has kind of publicly deemed as like her enemy. And again, with all of that in mind, let's get into part two. This is Jaclyn Hill addressing controversies. Now, this is the longest script I've ever made in my life. I know a lot of people make like 20 page scripts typed. This is handwritten in point form and I'm at like 10 pages single spaced. So what you need to do is grab a snacky poo, grab 
even though the haters are going to hate, a flavored water. I don't remember what's in this one. And sit tight because it's going to be long. Jaclyn Hill has often been called an alleged liar and scammer online, given that a majority of her controversies are based on poor business practices and taking advantage of the audience that has faith in her. So let's have a little puppy cleanser before we get into the rest of this, because this is going to be a big yikes. So again, I'm not going to cover every single controversy that Jaclyn Hill has ever faced because we'd be here forever. Rather, I'm going to go through the more relevant ones that I've seen online. So we need to first create a basis for Jaclyn Hill's approach. And from this, we're going to reference chapter one of Jacques Ellul's propaganda. Propaganda in the context is from the 1960s. So this is a bit of a different approach as far as what we deem propaganda now. I just want to keep in mind just the general approach and how similar it feels to a lot of the actions that Jaclyn Hill has had. So it says, step by step, the propagandist built his technique, and it says his because of the time it was written. So it says his because of like the way that things were written back then. So just keep that in mind. But it says, step by step, the propagandist built his techniques on the basis of his knowledge of man, his tendencies, his desires, his needs, his psychic mechanisms, his conditioning, and as much on social psychology as on depth psychology. He shapes his procedures on the basis of our knowledge of groups and their laws of formation and dissolution of mass influences and of environmental limitations. So what it's saying is, is that this person is adapting quickly based on the ever changing environments and has the basis of propaganda and sale and selling something or putting something forward in their minds. And I think this is very much what Jacqueline Hill does in her whole kind of approach to her brand and everything like that. So. That is the basis of, I find, that her approach. And that's her first element of rhetoric for this video. We will continue. So with this, we need to understand as well the context of this is 1962 and the propaganda term is different. But to solidify the relationship, I'm going to insert a little clip from Smokey Glow's The Evolution of Jaclyn Hill video. Jaclyn's whole kind of brand at this point was relatability and again, fostering that sister-like relationship with all of her subscribers. The parasocial relationship building was very strong. And I don't even know if she did this intentionally because I never like to say that people are like doing like master <laughs> manipulators or anything. But I do think that in turn, by developing such a strong relationship with her followers, by being relatable, fanning the flames of this parasocial relationship, she was, in turn, helping her bottom line. She was getting sales because people liked her, believed her, and bought the products that she recommended and happened to have a lot of affiliate codes attached to them. You can also tell from this video that Jacqueline was already starting to get some criticism for not being as relatable as she had been in 2012, which kind of happens to everybody, <laughs> especially on YouTube. I think it's very hard to be the same person, like exact same person that you were when you uploaded your first video, especially if you have something like her where she grew like millions of subscribers. So Jacqueline Hill clearly liked money. And by 2014, had a slew of affiliate codes with Sigma, Morphe, Gerard Cosmetics. I also have a code with Gerard Cosmetics. Subtle plug. Mine is Squish Gang. <laughs> and this quickly became the basis of her internet persona. So her first scandal involving business happened in 2016 because she was, she was exposed by T-channels, as well as other influencers, of the amount of money that affiliate links make. And she was so aware of the judgment and perception around people and how much money she made that she would consistently hide it or try to defend herself with things like buying designer bags. Then came the Becca collaboration along with the Morphe X Jaclyn Hill collection, which completely removed any mask of her being a sort of demure, low income making video creator. Obviously I have not had multi-million dollar sales on palettes. So you can tell that I'm still a pretty um, modest gal, but you can see that there's a very big difference. The only thing that I have is like this microphone and like this fun looking camera, but that's from a long time of putting it together, you know? So obviously when you sell hundreds of thousands of units within the most popular or arguably one of the most popular makeup stores, there's no way that you're not making a ton of money. Upon the success of the first Jaclyn Hill and Morphe collection, as in the one where she actually like made it, as opposed to like the favorites collection, then came the Jaclyn Hill Vault collection, which was supposedly shades that the original Jaclyn Hill palette did not have. With that, she sent some of them to some creators, one of them being Jackie Ina, who made a video with the PR palettes and exposed a lot of major quality issues with them. And I think, a lot of people tried to discredit Jackie Ina, especially in this time. And I noticed earlier in her career, especially, she would get a lot of kind of racist hate 
Uh, this is also around the time, I believe, or maybe it was a couple years after, but Jeffree Star calling her a rat. So I want to keep that in mind as well with the kind of general approach that Jaclyn Hill takes and the kind of nastiness that comes forward that there's some sort of discrepancies in the way that she treats certain people. But Morphe claimed that given the controversy with the quality of the palettes, they were going to take them back and reformulate them and then sell them. However, people figured out that they were the same because the amount of turnaround time was impossible and the batch codes were essentially the same and they were trying to say things like that they would take apart the palettes and like depot them and put new shadows in. But the thing is like these types of compacts, which are very similar to this sort of compact. So this is, this is a Gerard Cosmetics compact, but you can see like how they're inserted like that, right? You, you're not popping these out without ripping apart the entire thing, as opposed to something like this. This is my Natasha Denona bronze palette. You see how there's like a thick plastic there? And then there's these holes on the back. These ones can be depotted and moved around, but this is not at all similar to this, right? This is cardboard. And this is like a plastic, right? And I'm not saying, I'm not dogging on the Gerard Cosmetics quality at all because the actual like product in here is very nice, but this is also $90. So there's gonna be a difference, but you see how this is deep potable. The Morphe palettes were not. So it wasn't really making a lot of sense that they were being able to keep these types of components compact while also giving the turnaround of six weeks. So everyone knew that that was a load of hullabaloo. And then when people were criticizing the quality prior to Morphe having to retract and claim that there were issues, Jaclyn Hill went straight to the people are lying for clout. This is a common pattern as well. This happens a couple more times throughout the sort of um, addressing controversy moments. So I want to read another excerpt from Propaganda, which says the following. Also, it is way easier to read with my glasses on. Therefore, one type of propaganda will be found subtle in one situation and completely useful in another. To undertake an active propaganda operation, uh, it is necessary to make a scientific, sociological, and psychological analysis first, and then utilize those branches of science, which are becoming increasingly well-known. Now, here is where Jacqueline's issue comes to be, because she recycles the same approaches every single time, and that is why people became so keen to her games. And we'll get into that more down the line. This approach worked somewhat at the time. But as per the excerpt, this would not continue to work. In Jacqueline's defense and Morphe and the obvious discrepancies between her claims and the possible actions of reality, there was this clear desire to humanize the sort of brand and her means of driving her wealth, right? So she would often be like, oh, well, this was an honest mistake or these people don't have, you know, the time or this is too difficult or perhaps something like, well, I didn't know as if you're not checking the products that you're selling in advance, which again is very bizarre. And obviously they can be tricked, right? This has happened before. Uh, Nikki Tutorials did a collaboration with Too Faced where they sent her a different palette than the ones that they sold. However, notice that Nikki Tutorials did not work with Too Faced again. Uh, Jaclyn Hill take notes because you continue to work with a brand that you had tried to throw under the, the push under the rug or whatever, and then continued to work with yet also were like, mm, they did a bunch of stuff behind my back, but then still work with them again. So it doesn't really make sense. Any hoozles. A couple, year la couple years later came the Jaclyn Hill lipstick launch and a reformulation of the original, uh, an alleged reformulation, hypothetically in Minecraft, of the original Jaclyn Hill palette, which was no longer vegan. And which is interesting is that Jaclyn Hill kind of did as like a little oopsies as if sometimes products being vegan is not also not for like, or could also be for like allergy purposes. I have a friend of mine, for example, who's allergic to carmine. For those of you who don't know, carmine is often a pigment that makes for reds. So like this type, these types of colors here. I don't actually know if my Gerard Cosmetics palette that I used, which was the collaboration with Petty Page, um, which was called the uh, Dramatic Boutique No More Nudes palette. I don't know if that one's vegan, I didn't check, but I'm saying these tones will often not be vegan. They'll have carmine, which is crushed beetles. And a lot of people are allergic to that. I have a friend of mine who is. She'll get like these rashes and everything on her eyes. Now comes the lipstick launch, the infamous Jaclyn Hill lipstick launch. But before we get into that, we have another excerpt from a research paper called All We Have Is Words, Applying Rhetoric to Examine How Social Media Marketing Activities Strengthen the Connection Between the Brand and the Self. This is to connect what I was just talking about with Jaclyn Hill humanizing the Morphe brand. 
and I'll put the citation below in the description because I can't really pronounce the author's name. Like all the author's names, I have trouble reading and I don't want to butcher them. I will have the, I'll probably put it in like APA form citation or whatever down below. We are, the Squish Gang are academics. We are academics in these ends. Okay, so we are thinking with our noggins, okay? Consumers show a strong attachment and four bonds to anything self-expressive. That is an objective congruent with the self, which reflects the extent of meanness. And I'm just going to skip reading every single citation grouping. Um, attachment is basically the process of developing an emotional bond, which is facilitated by consistent and repeated experiences between relationship patterns as well. Consumers become attached to a specific brand and in the process of defining and maintaining their sense of self under the scope Park et al. 2010, in their definition of brand attachment, underlined that the strength of the bond relates not only to how connected consumers feel to the brands, but also how prominent the brand is in their mind. They will emphasize their memories through feelings and thoughts that relate to the brand and make the brand more salient and the bond even stronger. Now, given that Jacqueline Hill had such a tight bond with Morphe that it had intertwined itself into her reputation, she kind of took that same sort of work ethic that she had supposedly had with Morphe and, and the experience that she had developing it and tried to transfer it to Jaclyn Cosmetics as a brand and the same process to transfer as a brand. Now, this didn't work. She tried to get the audience to identify with her and her brand in the same way they de that they had previously identified with Morphe and her collaborations with them. However, the problem with this is, is that Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics or Jaclyn Cosmetics or whatever it's called, was only being backed by Jacqueline. The thing is with Morphe, if you didn't like Jacqueline, they had Jeffree Star, they had James Charles, they had Manny MUA, Jackie Ina, um, I think Nikki Tutorials. I wasn't online during this time, I gotta be honest. So my knowledge on like who exactly the beauty gurus are is not like 100%. So essentially Jacqueline Hill was trying to somehow transfer her brand, her brand identity of Morphe to the Jacqueline Hill brand. That is something I noticed based on her pitch videos and the way that she approached a lot of situations. So with understanding this connection, let's analyze the lipstick situation, response videos, etc. But first, I'm going to super quickly summarize for those of you who were not online at the time or were not aware of this situation. Jaclyn Hill announced her brand, Jaclyn Cosmetics, with a range of neutral bullet lipsticks. I am reading off because I want to get this in the right order. With this launch, she sent PR to influencers, one of them being Rob Beauty Christie who took her PR and put it under a, like a literal like microscope camera. People were buying them as well. And we're getting them around the same time as the people getting the PR. And we're seeing fuzz, black holes, sweat marks, and other forms of contaminants. This caused a lot of stir on social media, which Jacqueline initially blamed the consumers. So I'm going to unpack this a little bit. So one of the claims that Jacqueline made, she made a video called My Lipsticks, where she responded to all this. We're going to go into point by point. Then I'm going to compare similar products that I have and show the sort of discrepancies, okay? So first point of the video is that she claims that there are no contaminants. However, basic science shows or implies that anything within a product that's not supposed to be there is in itself a contaminant. Contaminants don't necessarily make you sick. They have the possibility of making you sick because sometimes two things that are fine together when mixed together can make you sick. Um, this is like a common thing in like chemistry and stuff like that where like, or for example, um, bleach and ammonia cleaners right obviously there's not bleach and ammonia in here i'm just trying to make an example two things when mixed together like they're fine on their own but then when you mix them they're bad right bleach fumes are obviously not super great for your lungs but you can clean with bleach and you won't die from the air that's coming off of it right same thing as you can clean with ammonia cleaners again maybe not the best idea ever to be huffing ammonia but we catch the drift right if you mix bleach cleaners and ammonia cleaners you make mustard gas <laughs> Okay, mustard gas will kill you dead ass immediately, right? So two things that are somewhat neutral on their own when mixed together make bad. That is the same nature of like contaminants. Given that it's not supposed to be there, means in itself could potentially cause danger. I did a couple biology classes. I have a deck, uh, which is a college diploma in applied science. Did a lot of chemistry. I did org chemistry, org chemistry, organic chemistry. Don't want to talk about it. I don't want flashbacks, but point is, I have a bit of awareness of the nature of like what a contaminant is. She kept hedging the criticism by constantly deferring back to this person said it was totally fine. 
she would say, oh, all these people on social media were complaining, but it was actually only 1%, and 99% of the people were saying it's fine. This person tweeted me and said it was fine. People didn't even want to accept refunds. They just wanted me to believe them. But because I'm such a nice, sweet person, I gave them the, the money anyways. Contact them. All you need to do is show them any proof, a video, a photo, whatever it is, and we'll take care of everything for you and make it right. I know that a lot of people are like, yeah, but what if people are lying? I don't, I don't even care. Like, I want to make this right for my customers. This is my first launch and it's very embarrassing. I'm not gonna make it about myself in any way and tell you how I feel about this, but it's embarrassing for me to not see you guys fully happy and I am so, so sorry that any of you are experiencing anything less than absolute perfection from my first launch. And I will do whatever it takes to make it up for you. I will send you a brand new lipstick. I will pay for it myself. I'll give you a full refund. I don't care. I want you guys to experience the products that I approved, that I love, and what I want to create for my brand going forward. As if it was sort of like doing people a favor to refund from a potential set of contaminated products that she didn't even have the batch codes for because it was all under one code because it was produced so quickly that nothing could be brought back. Blames factors such as components that are never a problem, like that they needed like these white fuzzy gloves to deal with a product. So again, we're, keep, we're gonna keep bringing up Gerard Cosmetics because it's also most similar to what she had. This is a defective lipstick to some extent in the sense of that it arrived to me broke, right? It was PR. I'm not like, and I used it, like it's fine. But if we, there are no fuzzies on here. It's a little bit chunky because it is a thick glitter lipstick. Like if we swatch it on my hand, I need to pull it down more because it is broken. It looks, it has a high shine, right? So naturally it's gonna be chunky because it has very chunky glitters on it, right? And again, it got slightly damaged in postage, but there's no fuzzies on here, right? And the there's no huge pearls, rather a general like unevenness of texture. But that's again, because of getting hot and cold and in Canada and the FedEx people, I swear to God, use boxes as, as soccer balls. This is a defective product to what a normal company's defective product would be in the sense of that there's some sort of some issues that are slightly out of their control, whatever. And I'm not saying this in a way that I was at all upset because I have like here, I had other ones that were like, like this is like absolutely flawless. Like look at that, right? And this is what a normal, this is the only bullet lipstick I own that's like not whatever messed up in any way. This is no bumps, no lumps. This video has just become an ad for Gerard Cosmetics, but I swear to God, I don't mean it to be. I'll show you other stuff in a second. But no lumps, no bumps. This is what a bullet lipstick is supposed to look like. And then when you swatch it, it's a nice smooth line, right? This is sort of a berry red tone. I did not do a very good job. I'm not a huge lip product gal. That's why, that's why I keep saying I don't have that many because I'm just not a huge lipstick person. Here is something that is the most similar to what she describes. She said she had shiny silver... Um, kind of geometric components, right? That they would use white gloves for as they would not smear or smudge, right? They didn't want prints on them. And this is what my lipstick looks like. Again, no lumps, no bumps. Again, and also swatches smoothly, right? Really nice. This is uh, this is like a deep chocolatey brown that I use. Um, more as like a lip liner because it's really dark. I didn't expect it to be, I thought I was getting like a zoop for the YSL lipstick, but this is more pigmented. So I thought the brown would be okay, but it's a little too dark. Any hoozles. This has the shiny component, right? And you can see it got a little bit of Mika fingerprints on it. However, you don't get fingerprints from wearing gloves. Like she said, they didn't want prints, so they didn't use regular plastic gloves like latex. Do you, crime scene people wear latex gloves. Doctors wear latex gloves. People who do like, biology and do like microbiology like experiments things like that where or like plastic like those blue gloves right because some of their latex free because of allergies whatever they don't leave prints on components like this only bare ass hands leave like that's what something that i thought was so stupid i'm like what do you mean if you've worked in a lab for 30 seconds you know that your hands this the oils from your hands right and the shape of your prints that leave the sort of uh, prints on the glass or whatever you're using. The oil's not going through the plastic. That's like literally the entire point. That's why when you peel back your glove, that shit's sweaty. <laughs> like, so I don't know what that was about. No one ever mentioned that. Like that literally makes 
zero cents. This is my last sort of lipstick. Again, a shiny. This one does not a geometric component. But also, look at me. I'm like, let's rub my greasy hands on it. And it's still pretty clean, right? So it shouldn't have even been that much of a worry in the first place. See, there's actually a fuzzy on this lipstick, but I know that it was from me. Yeah, because it also pulls right out. So they're just a little make a hair on the lipstick. Point is, right? No lumps, no bumps. How do I have one product from YSL? Look, I even have Charlotte Tilbury. One product from Charlotte Tilbury. Very similar to the uh, Gerard Cosmetics lipstick. If you wanted a dupe for this, actually the Gerard Glitter lipstick is pretty similar. And then, look, I have all these different brands. And Gerard Cosmetics. And now a single one of these has any similar defects. Oxygen bubbles, lumps, bumps, hairs, anything. So then what's the excuse? Because these all have similar construction and components to what she was saying. And she made excuses about a creamy formula, which this is like, you can see how shiny it is. Like that is a very soft formula. This doesn't have any oxygen issues. This has a shiny component. And a texture, this doesn't have any problems except being a little bit warped from use. But like, I just never understood that. And I wanted to compare it after the fact with like actual lip products that I own. And then she has this sort of manufactured irresponsibility. As in like, oh, I didn't think this through enough even though I worked on it for five years. You know, like I produced all of it in two weeks. Then she provides documents. Some of them being entirely blurred out. Some of them being entirely blurred out. I'll put that clip here. And it is FDA approved. And again, I will give you proof right here. If you guys want to look over these documents in depth and tear them apart, you go right ahead and see that they are not contaminated. Every single ingredient is FDA approved and they are not expired. I want to ease your minds with that before even getting into all the nitty gritty stuff of this video so that you're not sitting here thinking like, oh my gosh, is it true that if I use this lipstick that it's going to, it's going to hurt me in some way? No, that is not the case. And now you guys have seen that. So let's move forward. So... And there's so much blacked out in a ton of them that there's it's become completely irrelevant. Like the point of the document no longer makes any sense. So like, what if, I think it's just to show that there was some sort of receipt. And I talked about this in my The Impact of No More Lies or what the Rhetoric and Impact of No More Lies video, which is in the same playlist as this video. And I talked about that sort of need of like showing receipts no matter what, no matter if they're even useful. Because of the sort of nature that James Charles's No More Lies video had made. And she even said that the fibers were black gloves or whatever, or from white gloves. White fuzzy hairs were from white cotton gloves, right? Here's the thing. Raw Beauty Chrissy found black hairs. Like, black hairs. Here in it. Here it is. Hmm. What is that? Let's look at another control because I don't feel like it's. And some of them looking like beard hairs. There's a little coil, a little puby texture, you know? I don't want to put that out. <laughs> Me saying pube and lips. <coughs> oh my God. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Point is. Texture was not of a cotton fiber. That was definitely like a wiry hair. Like if I plucked out one of my aggressive eyebrow hairs and tried to put that. Sorry, if you hear any barking, I made Gus a bedroom under the Squish Gang bed, like with like a bed and a duvet and everything under there. And if he's having a good old time, you're going to hear some squeaks. I don't apologize. Any hoozles. Then she would shift to this sort of kind persona who really cares about the audience when she would, again, pull that like random like, oh, well, this person didn't want to refund that blah, 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 which was completely irrelevant and would sort of kind of lead you to thinking of what she actually believed versus like the general response that she had to cave to. Then she came out with another video about a month after the fact, I believe, called Where Have I Been? And did more of the same while also shouting out key points that drama channels made, such as like the blood, the gray hoodie thing, the no makeup thing, and etc. So it becomes clear how focused on criticism Jaclyn Hill really is. So there have been more scandals over time, particularly with not disclosing affiliate products or making kind of misleading Amazon favorites videos. So those of you who are wondering, if someone has made an Amazon favorites video and there's a sore front, 
they have to be um, mentioning if they're an Amazon affiliate or not. The reason why I've never mentioned if I'm an Amazon affiliate, it's because I'm not. So my Amazon lists, uh, the wish list and the rhetoric greetings list are not affiliate. I don't get any commission. Um, obviously, I wouldn't get a commission if you bought me something. But in the sense of like the list of books, if you wanted to go through that and perhaps buy them for yourself or whatever, I actually don't even think you can if you're not affiliate. Like I can't have them so you can buy them for yourself. But they're just there for you to look at because I didn't want people to feel like I was recommending the readings because I wanted to make money off of them. I also do have affiliate codes that I have disclosed and out loud and down in the description tons of times with every Jules and Gerard Cosmetics. However, that came from working with those brands because I genuinely really liked them and I don't want to be seen as like a Jaclyn Hill type. And that's why I kind of just really briefly mentioned them. Uh, in my intros of my videos as opposed to making like dedicated like Gerard Cosmetics favorites or every Jules favorites videos because I don't want to be a salesperson. I just get a lot of questions about what I'm wearing, what makeup I have, what jewelry I have, da 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 And I just want people to be able to get to them if they want to. And anytime anyone asks me anything, I'll just tell them. Like I don't like, I don't go, uh, oh, this is my, um, what am I, Slay the Day setting spray from Gerard Cosmetics. Here's the link through my store. No, I'll just be like, oh, it's this. No link or anything. If you want to shop the link, it's there in my description. But I'm not just going to tell you things only so I can make money off of them. But Jaclyn Hill has been doing that and has formed this sort of this sort of disingenuous form of through what's called EWOM, which is Internet or like electronic, electronic word of mouth. We'll get into that a little bit more down the line. But it's this sort of process that people got to believe influencers in the first place because they were considering the recommendation on, as honest, similar recommendations to those that they would talk to in real life. That's why influencers became so good at selling things because they were able to kind of just be besties with the people who are watching them and be able to recommend things that per the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission, if you have any audience in the United States, and I would dare to say that essentially every single YouTuber who speaks English without a, a sort of like accent, who has a North American accent, I mean, has a primarily American audience. Even a lot of people in the UK will have a primarily American audience just because that's just kind of how the platform works. Google's an American company, etc. If you have any audience in the United States, you must follow the Federal Trade Commission's guidelines on disclosing an affiliate links and things like that. That is why in all caps with stars, I have these things make me a kickback, but my Amazon stuff is not in that. It is because those are not affiliate. I'm just trying to make this so clear because I don't want people to think that I'm just trying to like dog on Jaclyn Hill to make myself money in this way. But I just want to make it really clear because I find a lot of people are not necessarily clear on the process. Any, I have friends that have small channels, like really small, like under a thousand, under 2000, whatever, who might want to start you know, trying to link things or whatever, you need to be very careful with how you disclose these things. And Jaclyn Hill is not and has been called out for this a ton of times and somehow has not been dunked on by the Federal Trade Commission because it needs to be immediately with the th So if your whole video is dedicated to it, it needs to be the first link in the description. Actually, that's why the sponsorship, the first link in the description is the sponsorship link. That is because in order to have any sort of... Um, relationship with a brand it needs to be incredibly clear that, that is the case there was some unnecessary criticism with the lipsticks people were saying that like because Jacqueline Hill got the press she got fat people were saying that she was ugly people were saying that like you know she did these things like on purpose just to like fuck with people or something so what happened though with that and this is why it's so important to not relentlessly nitpick on people I've talked about this a lot in the leftist online space as well when you needlessly pick on people they will begin to fixate on that criticism as a means to deflect from legitimate criticism. And that is why Jacqueline Hill has begun to make a joke of people who criticize her. And this is why she had even worn this sort of like canceled Halloween costume a few years ago. That got people really pissed, naturally. But it's just this way that she's able to deflect because there's almost, frankly, an equal amount of ridiculous haters to legitimate criticism as far as if you're going through every single comment. However, if you look at the grand sphere of the internet and people outside of her sort of audience, then the criticism starts to shift to more constructive. But she doesn't look at that. Well, she does, but she, she does look at the drama channel stuff. What I'm saying is that based on her reactions to, through her audience and through her pockets, things like that, 
there's a clear avenue. There is this is this kind of phenomenon is called the negativity bias. And this is outlined in Antonino Reno's paper on negative social media comments, um, which I again will put in the description. So this is called perspective on online negativity. Peru, um, Pareto's 80-20 law and negativity bias. I suggest two behavioral theories to offer a helpful perspective on the disproportionate power of negativity. Pareto's 80-20 law and negativity, and negativity bias. The harshest trolls aren't necessarily more numerous. They're just louder than everyone else. Chen 2017. This phenomenon can be interpreted using Pareto's 80-20 law. 80% of everything is cause slash explained by 20% of the actors slash units involved in the process. Additionally, even when the number of positive comments far outweigh the negative, a psychological theory known as negativity bias shows that negativity has a stronger influence. In psychology, negativity bias refers to a phenomenon in which humans have a greater recall of unpleasant memories compared to positive memories. Pareto's 80-20 law and negativity bias each offer important insights that provide perspectives to help companies understand negativity and overcome the fear of participating online. Pareto's 80-20 law and negativity bias have nuanced perspectives on negative social media comments. Pareto's 80-20 law is more of a quantitative measure, as the name suggests. Pareto's law uses percentages to explain how a few comments can have disproportionate influence. Negativity bias, on the other hand, is more of a qualitative measure. Negativity bias asserts the negative comments have more influence than the positive comments. So here's the thing. Even YouTube, to some extent, does this because... Some people, if you've ever noticed like a YouTuber live streaming and they have like the plugins for like people's like to dislike ratios, for example, it will show green only at like 90% or higher or maybe 80% or higher like to dislike ratio. Once you start getting into like the 80, 70%, it starts to go yellow. Then it gets red anywhere I believe under 70%. Even though 70% of people liking your video is a majority. 80% being like a yellow tone, and this is from memory, so maybe I'm wrong off by a little bit, but still, is considered not great. What's considered a good like to dislike ratio is like over 90%. Even like your own algorithm, your own systems as a creator, and how other creators view you through plugins like this shows that sort of negativity bias. And this is kind of one of those toxic notions online. And these this one of those things that makes it somewhat difficult for creators to function on the platform. Jacqueline's general negligence has sort of kind of become the basis of both her actions and her reputation. Because now we get to one of the more recent controversies, which is the Jacqueline Roxanne and Cozy brands. So Jacqueline Hill claims to be the CEO boss type, while not being the one truly in control of necessarily all of her brands. This was something that happened with the Jaclyn Cosmetics brand where she she claimed to be the CEO boss babe type. And then when Miss Morphe went under Chapter 11 bankruptcy and began closing a lot of the stores, Forma, the mother, the sort of uh, overhead brand of Morphe and its affiliates had to show the list of brands that would be affected. One of those being Jaclyn Hill. Now, call me Shane Dawson because of <laughs> conspiracies, but like Jack. Shane Dawson, of all people, mentioned this in his god awful conspiracy video. If you want a subtle plug, I summarized it for you. But he said that sometimes two brands that make the same product, let's say like the animal crackers, will not have to disclose that they're the same until there's a recall. And then they have to mention all of the ones affected, which then you realize they're made in the same place, whatever. This same form of exposing happened with Forma going under, or Morphe going under, and Jaclyn Hill, etc. So then Jaclyn Hill released a jewelry brand called Jaclyn Roxanne, which she then again has claimed that she owned, blah, 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 blah. And both people and literal brands have been exposing that Jaclyn Hill has copied the designs. And I'll insert a clip for that here. Moving on from James, Jaclyn Hill is having a really bad week right now. I don't know if something is in Gatorade for her right now. Like someone should honestly look up her chart because it seems that things are just going from bad to worse every single day this week for her. And I'm not even being shady right now. The first thing that went wrong for Jaclyn Hill this week is Jaclyn launched a new collection over with Jaclyn Roxanne. It's like these little gemstone necklaces. This was of course like the most personal, inspiring. She was just amazed by it. Her favorite thing that she has ever launch you know the same script that Jaclyn Hill pulls out with every single launch that she does it's the same spiel the same song and dance <laughs> every single time it literally is well there is a brand called ice link that called Jaclyn Hill out like literally put her post from Jaclyn Roxanne with their necklace and they said k someone dm them and they actually thank them for calling Jaclyn Hill out because a lot of these brands kind of do just like let Jaclyn Hill have a pass even though they know that she is severely copying the homework she has even come out and said that her jewelry line is inspired by other brands like it's supposed to be a cheaper version for her followers because they just ask her so 
much in her DMs. Well, Ice Link responded to the person that DM'd them and said, thank you so much. Apparently she copied other jewelry brands before. It's really unfortunate, especially she has such a large platform to influence, but our quality speaks. So they are saying that Jaclyn Hill's jewelry is kind of like shit and like low quality. <laughs> You're not going to get what you would get if you actually bought their necklace. I will say this. I had never heard mm. of Ice Link before this, I but haven't. I went and looked at their jewelry and mm. their stuff looks really nice. Yeah. You know what they don't do? Mm. They don't put their earrings on a in leaf. Well, Ice Link actually went on to shade Jaclyn Hill a little bit more and to prove that they actually had the design first and Jaclyn Hill was copying them. <laughs> they showed an email that was sent out on 42821 and it showed the jewelry and it was captioned Petty Series. Ice Link also went on to post on their page and they said, our best selling collection since 2021. Explore our birthstone collection and celebrate the gems in your life. But that is not the only Jaclyn Rocks and drama that is going on right now because somebody over on Reddit actually went on AliExpress or Alibaba, one of those websites, and they found the exact jewelry that Jaclyn Hill is selling with Jaclyn Roxanne, like <laughs> down to the little paperclip ear that she was posting that were her like favorite. She just loves the design. And they were showing that those pieces were like as low as like a dollar 19 like per. But another thing is Jaclyn Hill was claiming these are sweat proof. These are tamper proof. These are this, that, the other, whatever. And they would tarnish like that. Like people would wear them in the shower once finished. They would wear them out for a day and go jogging or something. Kaputs. So obviously that was a lie and they're not tarnish proof um which at those price points is not maybe necessarily the expectation maybe some people did expect it i'm not sure My, like i'm gonna be honest i'm not really a big like i don't buy a ton of jewelry because of just being broke <laughs> uh i had my i have my affiliation with every jewels i've gotten some really nice pieces because of that but they do um they are very low pr price points so you're not you know gonna like tear them apart and not have anything bad happen to them or my other pieces, we had a family friend who owned a jewelry store. So I would get like my nicer pieces through them. Like I wasn't, so my knowledge on like what brackets of pricing would or would not tarnish is not necessarily something that I know. But for example, these are like a gold material, right? These have not tarnished. They shouldn't because these were 700 fucking dollars. <laughs> Um, but this is that sort of kind of gold plated, I sort of material, I believe these are designer frames. So I actually have no idea what they're made out of. They're definitely plated to some extent, but I just don't know point is. And before people go, blah, 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 you say you're poor $700 glasses. Blah, 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 I'm going to defend myself in the chat really quick. I have progressive anti-fatigue distance and reading and astigmatism correction in the same lenses. That's why there's so much money because the lenses alone were like ran me almost like $600. So upon people exposing that the Jaclyn brand has somewhat copied people's designs, this, I don't remember if I heard this or if it came up in a video and I'll insert a clip if I find it. I watched so much Jaclyn Hill related content over the last like week that my brain has rotted into a morsel of what it was before. So if I'm mistaking, this this is hypothetical allegedly in minecraft but i recall her saying or changing the story into this sort of idea that she wants to emulate more expense expensive brands so for example like the tiffany design right like the that little like um heart stamped pendant it's like if someone made something like that right it's like inspired by the tiffany um whatever chain except it's not like 600 bucks but then at first it was like all original designs. I have designers and I'm doing all this stuff. It has always had an investor. It's always had a partner. It's always had something. It's always a collaboration. And you know, Jaclyn Cosmetics, like I have partners, I have help, I need help. Like I could not physically run Jaclyn Cosmetics on my own, at least not right now. This is the first thing that I have done literally in my life where I did it by myself, where I created my own team. I am the founder, I am the owner, I am the CEO. I'm literally everything is mine. And not one penny came from somebody else. I created every single piece of jewelry. Like I conceptualize everything myself. I know I have so many people out there asking me if I'm still gonna be doing Jaclyn Cosmetics. And of course, of course, but this is a totally separate thing. Like Jaclyn Cosmetics is my baby and I hope to have Jaclyn Cosmetics for the rest of my life. I hope that one day that I'm able to take that company and like pass it down to my family. Like that is my original love, but this is something separate. The reason I named this Jacqueline Roxanne, I really went back and forth with a ton of different names. And everyone was like, dude, Jules by Jacqueline. And I'm like, no, it's like so lame. My born name is Jacqueline Roxanne Eilers. I am Jacqueline Hill on the internet, but in my personal life, I'm Jacqueline Roxanne. That's who I am. When I first started my YouTube channel, I actually typed in Jacqueline Roxanne because that's what I wanted to name my channel. And my husband at the time, he was like, Jacqueline Hill has such a better ring to it. Like it just sounds better, like Jacqueline Hill. And I believe he was right it did sound better so i was like you're right well then i'll never forget when i launched my original morphe palette 
that you guys all know. Although it was so exciting, there was a part of me that was so sad that it wasn't like Jacqueline Roxanne because that's what my family calls me. In real life, it's like, I'm just Jacqueline Roxanne. And it's almost like Jacqueline Hill is my stage name at this point. Does that make sense? Like, ah. Oh. So with that being said, I settled on Jacqueline Roxanne because this is my passion project. This is something that I love. It's something that's mine. It's something that I get to have full ownership over and it's something that I'm just so excited about. So I am so excited to introduce to you my full 28 piece collection by me, Jacqueline Roxanne. custom made for about a year and a half. And every time I wear it in videos or on my stories, the amount of people asking me where I got it from. And I was like, I got to create one for a reasonable price. So this right Which one is a girly? It's a lot of that too, right? It's a lot of backpedaling. But when you're a social media creator, you cannot do that shit. Like every time I can find that I've had to backpedal on something, I make it so abundantly clear because I know if I want to pretend to hide it, y'all come up with the receipts. There's somebody who bookmarks every single one of my tweets. I don't know who it is, but, but like there is somebody who's keeping track of like everything that I'm doing. So I don't like that, but like, you know, with that being said, this is the name of the game. So the thing that's caused the most contention recently is Jaclyn Hill's cozy brand, which is a sort of like loungewear, blankets, sweaters, pajamas type beat, right? And this is because the exact name, as far as the spelling goes, had been used not only by another company, but another influencer in a similar space with a similar form of product, at least for some of the things that they had. Now, their brand is pronounced Coz, but Jaclyn Hill, if I remember correctly, it either had a accent, girl, I don't know what it is in English, but the accent trema, the two dots, or not. I'm going to check because I forgot to do that before. I, I'm trying to find it. You have to go through her. I'm in it first. What? I lied. It doesn't even have like the accent of the two dots or whatever. It's just straight up the same spelling. But for some reason, hers is pronounced cozy, even though that's not how you would spell that. The other thing is, if you look up, I just want to do this, show you guys just basically like if you look up Jaclyn Hill Coz or cozy, Every single thing is like a gossip blog or like a gossip video. Like I couldn't find the website. I had to look up Jaclyn Hill Co's or Cozy or whatever website. So, oh, hot diggity. <laughs> Things are not looking good for Miss Jaclyn. If you can't find the brand and you have like 5 million subs, like that is not good hot diggity daffodil all right the person who had the original co's brand is someone named kaylin nicholson she has a podcast where she addresses this called kaylin's coffee talk and that channel has 212,000 subscribers apparently her brand as i mentioned is pronounced co's but jacqueline's is pronounced like cozy so kaylin made a video called saying goodbye to co's where she addresses what is going on with the brand that kind of mentions how jacqueline hill never addressed this in any sort of meaningful way However, in the entire video, she never mentioned Kaylin, never mentions Jackson Hill by name, but it's like so incredibly obvious. And it was a sort of sad video because it was essentially Kaylin taking responsibility for Jacqueline stealing the name and branding because of her not like trademarking it first. One, the biggest thing is that it would squash my SEO, which is search engine optimization. If you go and you Google Coz, K-O-Z-E, I'm the first thing that pops up, or my band, my business is the first thing that pops up. And my YouTube is also the second thing that pops up. It's like a bunch of videos. And again, then you'll see that DJ, that restaurant, the other things that can pop up under Coz as well. If this creator was the creator that was gonna launch this brand, I knew it was gonna do really well. I knew they were, they were definitely gonna have a lot more resources and as well as a lot more following so that now when you look up Coz, not only would I not show up in that search engine optimization towards the top, um, still I probably would, but the other thing that was a bigger worry for me is that the brand recognition itself, when you saw the word Coz, would no longer you would, would no longer be Kaylin. It would not like Coz, Kaylin, it would become Coz, 
this creator or co's this brand and you would forget kind of about this brand. Not to mention if someone's walking around with a sweater like this or I'm walking around with a sweater like this, someone might think I'm, re I'm repping that brand, you know, if they don't know about my brand. Those are the two main reasons. And then it followed into more reasons. And to be honest, this creator tends to have videos made about them. And I've watched a few and I actually am really grateful that the ones that I watched specifically like Peter Mons and Rich Luxes, they were very kind. At least I thought they were pretty kind, at least to me and I can't speak for anybody else. So thank you to you two for being as kind as you were when you were running this story, I guess you will. But like, that was the other thing I was worried about is that now when you would look up Coe's, the other thing that was gonna start happening is that tea videos would show up or what is called like tea videos or drama videos. And I've never been in any tea or in any drama and I don't want to be, I also don't want the brand affiliated with like, like I don't want people to look up Coe's and then be like, ooh, drama, you know what I mean? And so that was another issue. Uh, and uh, I really wanna be as kind as possible, but I also wanna be honest and I didn't get any response back from said creator. And then a couple, I wanna say a week or two later, it was confirmed that this creator was launching this business. I knew at that point they had seen my comment. If I'm being very, very frank and honest, if you were to start any business, if you were to start any company, what would be the first thing you would do when you came up with the name? Would you not look it up on social media and look it up on Google? Because if you did both of those things, you would definitely see my codes. And if you found my codes, you would know that I was a fellow YouTuber, a fellow influencer, I hate that word, but content creator, with a brand under the same spelling. And so... But she also said that she was keeping up with like who had the brand and like of similar names and how everything was working and evaluating everything like that. And also being Canadian, uh, Kaylin is as well, there's a sort of bit of a difference of the process here. And legal action is also very different uh, in Canada where it's a lot harder to sue people. It's uh, one of the main things. Kaylin Nicholson has been forced to rebrand her entire co's brand and she had like a everything co she had like free content like yoga stuff fitness stuff like sell like this whole entire like you know umbrella and then proceeded to like have to kind of get rid of all of it because this one person who had the money and resources to do so would not change their branding um also for those of you who want to check it out i will link kaylin's video in the description for more details so to no one's surprise, as I had mentioned, there was also quality issues with Jacqueline Roxanne. Then people have been noticing, or at least T-Spill has been noticing, that there seems to be a sneaky rebrand of everything starting to kind of funnel under Jacqueline Roxanne, hypothetically, allegedly, in Minecraft, because the Jacqueline best-selling throw blanket, which was originally under the cozy brand has now moved to Jacqueline rocks even allegedly having removed the introduction of the cozy throw in the cozy video like the cozy launch video it has been cropped out he still shows the two videos um the clips there in the video which i'll put that clip in now so finding it interesting that Jacqueline was so quick to address the situation with lana but she's yet to address the situation with kaylin and cozy well, it looks like Jacqueline might be quietly shutting down Cozy. A post on Reddit started to go around showing Jacqueline changed the name of one of her most popular items from Cozy. When Jacqueline launched Cozy, the item she was most excited about was her throw blanket. It was called the Cuddle Me Throw by Cozy. Right. Well, this screenshot started to go around Reddit showing Jacqueline changed the name of the throw to the Cuddle Me Throw by Jacqueline Roxanne. Of course, as soon as I saw this, I ran to Jacqueline's website. And you guys know, if you've been on Jacqueline's website before, she always has her businesses linked under shop. She had Jacqueline Roxanne, and then she had Cozy. And I actually have a screenshot because, of course, I still had all my tabs open from when we talked about her whole necklace situation. And all Jacqueline had listed was Jacqueline Roxanne and Cozy, and that was it. When I refresh that page, you can see she added another section called Throws. Jacqueline removed the Cuddle Me Throw from her cozy section, and it's now under a whole section on its own with a new label. The new stitch on the blanket even says, by Jacqueline Roxanne. So it seems that Jacqueline's trying to secretly rebrand from cozy, which I guess is somewhat of a smart move, given that the second I tried to look it up, all that came up was controversy of her stealing the other person's branding, despite never actually addressing it, because that's a whole other mess. So we know that Jacqueline is money hungry. Jacqueline Hill likes to allegedly, hypothetically, in Minecraft, lie a lot, and was pushing a lot of people under the rug. This is not even including like Jen Gerard, who apparently has had a rocky time with Jaclyn Hill. I couldn't find much on that, but I keep hearing that. Makeup Geek, which will Marlena, Marlena sell. We're gonna read that Reddit post in a second. Don't you worry. And a multitude of other creators who have often kind of had falling out with her and called her like a snake. So it's clear that Jacqueline has prioritized making money since the start of her career. And it's made it apparent that she'll prioritize that over real life relationships. 
Now we're going to read a Reddit post that Merlin Estelle had put on the Jacqueline Snark subreddit. Yes. So this Reddit post reads as such. New to this sub, found you all. Written by you slash Marlene Estelle. I'm tired of staying quiet, especially after the Kaylin incident, because that's yet another woman in a lineup of many who have been done dirty by a manipulative liar. I'm tired of not speaking everything in fear of being called a hater looking for relevancy. But since I closed my brand already, Makeup Geek, which closed last year, uh, I don't have to worry about being told I'm trying to drum up sales. I've been holding this all in for seven years. I've forgiven Jacqueline for losing Makeup Geek a million dollars, even though it was a shit move and hurt my company horribly. I should have gotten a contract signed, but never imagined a friend would pull out knowing the inventory was already in house. Hardest life lesson I ever learned. I even texted her pictures of all the crates of products sitting in my warehouse. That's why Makeup Geek struggled so much after 2016 was a literal million dollars worth of product was ordered. Retail revenue loss was $4.5 million. One million was just what was invested in product ordered. Many boring palettes happened after that in an effort to recover costs. In the nude palette, a bunch of other ones in the same packaging because I had 100,000 units. I ended up tossing thousands of them last year when I announced Makeup Geek's closure. But what hurt even more than the financial wreckage was her pretending to give a friend uh, to be a friend only to drop me like a toilet wad as soon as she found someone else to give her what she wanted. Info on how to start a makeup brand. Meanwhile, I was thinking it was a true friendship, so I went out of my way to give secretive info like labs and packaging connects. I even drove her personally to San Francisco from Napa to do an in-person meeting with a vendor to help her with lipsticks. She was Makeup Geek's biggest affiliate, so I have just not helped her knowing it was technically competition for another brand. I knew how hard it was starting a brand from scratch with no help. I believed in her and actually did love her like a friend and want to see her succeed. She's crazy talented in makeup. Once Jacqueline became friends with Linda, which is the owner of Mor- which was the owner of Morphe at the time, not only was I dropped, but she took Linda to every lab I gave to her, put my reputation on the line by asking favors from my vendors to meet with her. The final straw of friendship for me was me seeing her at my lab with Linda the same day as me while she blew me off, stated that she was too busy to meet me even for a coffee. She lied saying she had errands to run and couldn't meet up. Meanwhile, that afternoon, my team sees her and Linda at my lab while we're there. That was the day I knew who Jacqueline Hill truly was, and I felt stupid and deceived. I messaged Jacqueline months before Lipstick Gate and told her I was hurt all this time and stated my feelings about the shady business practices of Morphe. Lying, resucking about vegan palettes, subpar quality, etc. When I stated it was a shit move to pull out of the collab, she had no remorse and said, What do you want me to do, Marlena? And yes, I warned her about that lab. She did a rush job and went with them anyways. I knew it was a rush job when Lipstick Gate happened because my other vendors who denied the last minute request from Morphe told me. Again, that's why I was vocal about Lipstick Gate because I knew what happened even as she was lying through her teeth. Fuzzy gloves my ass. It hasn't been one thing with her, but a repeated series of lies, stepping on other women to serve her for what she wants, stealing other brands, blaming everyone else for poor morals, and so much more. I know I've been blunt lately, but on, blunt lately, but honestly, I'm fucking fed up. And no, I won't do a video because her fans are rabid and I want to keep some semblance of peace after working hard the last four years to get rid of toxic people and things in my life. I should probably not blast her on social even, but the Kaylin instance was so damn shitty that I'm just fed up. That's why, <laughs> so that's why I post here, because it's hard to keep quiet when I see so much shit happening to other women too. Stealing cozy from Kaylin and mocking the trademark was disgusting. Don't get me started on her lying about the family-owned business either. Becca CEO, Jen Gerard, myself, Kaylin, and now Lana. These are just some of the people wrecked by Jacqueline's selfish, shady moves. There's a common denominator here, and it's not all of us. Thank you for letting me rant. Woo, oh, phew. <laughs> Woo that felt good to release. Okay. Now we're going to move on to part three, which is Jacqueline Hill's relationship with her audience. But first, Gus. That was long and hard, so we're having another puppy cleanser. Let's get into part three, Jaclyn Hill's relationship with her audience. There are obvious issues that internet audiences have with Jaclyn Hill's business practices and the feeling of general negligence towards the consumer. However, this section will focus more so on how she's viewed in the public eye, which given Jaclyn's focus on revenue will also have aspects of greed throughout. One of the primary complaints from Jacqueline's audience, along with like drama commentary channels, etc., is how Jacqueline Hill claims everything she's about to release or whatever she has spent years doing and dedicated all of her time to. Obviously, this does not add up, given, you know, a multitude of reasons. Uh, The multiple failed launches, constantly changing the story, 
the fact that her day is often cat- often that her day is cataloged on socials and they're, you know, she's obviously not working. Uh, at least as much she, as she says she is. So, and every launch video seems to have the same script talking about how she's this the greatest thing she's ever done. She's put her whole heart and soul into it. Yada, yada. Another thing that people noticed was a lot of uploads only being focused on either launching brands or Amazon affiliated products. So there's no desire to build a relationship with the audience in any sort of actual authentic way. Rather, every single thing needs to be for money, needs to be for clout, needs to be for some sort of other reason. There is a term in research around influencer recommendations I mentioned before called EWOM or electronic word of mouth. This is the most authentic way of sharing things online. EWOM, while linked to selling, kind of degrades the effect when the line between what is affiliated with and what is actually authentic starts to blur. The other problem, obviously, is the victim mentality and general lack of responsibility for any of the issues that have come up. This was prevalent, for example, um, the, into the way that she constantly de- like defers back to, oh, these people are okay with what happened. People didn't want a refund for my lipsticks. People love their Jacqueline Roxanne. People have had no problem with Cozy. People have loved my Morphe palettes. People liked the Vault Collection. People were buying the Vault Collection, etc. But this constant switch strongly implies the narrative that she truly believes, as I mentioned before, because she keeps going, it's a minute amount, even though, and, and people online are just negative and the, and the volumes or whatever. If you sell a million units and 1% of them are faulty, I believe that's still 10,000 units. That's a lot of moldy lipsticks. So Jaclyn Hill also will insert herself into narratives as long as it can potentially harm those who she disagrees with. This I talked about, I believe, in my most popular video on the channel, the end of the entitled Beauty Influencer Era, where I talked about the way that Jaclyn Hill had inserted herself into Michaela Naguera, talking about how much she hates Rich Lux because of Cody's addiction issues in the past. Now, to super briefly summarize that situation, Cody is Michaela Naguera's fiance. Michaela is a huge TikTok creator. Cody met um, a girl before in rehab that he had gone to in the past, and the girl had come back up being like, oh my God, that's the same guy I dated, yada, yada, whatever. And Rich Lux had made TikToks talking about it and stuff, and I guess Michaela felt that was a little bit too intrusive because Cody doesn't have a large internet presence. With that, Jaclyn Hill began to claim that essentially, hypothetically, allegedly in Minecraft, drama channels utilize her ex-husband John, John Hill's addiction to the point in which he ended his own life due to these addiction issues. Now, that is horrifying to even think about and putting essentially someone's death on their hands, which is manipulative to say the absolute least. And maybe I'm mistaken that I went that far, but there was definitely this notion of like, you bullied me for John's addiction issues, you bullied him, etc. That's the way that, that's the gig, that's part of being famous. I've talked about Jeffree Star, James Charles, and the Illuminati. They ain't coming at me, but Jaclyn Hill all of a sudden has an issue with it. So Jaclyn Hill sent this message out and it says like this, because the receipt goes as follows. I've had my limit. Growing up on social media, I had to deal with so much criticism, allegations, speculations, and lies. Right there, right there, she says, growing up on social media, I had to deal with allegations, criticism, speculation, and lies. That's part of the gig, Jaclyn Hill. If you grow up on social media, if you are a popular celebrity, you will be scrutinized, dissected, picked, pulled apart in the media, in the tabloids. That's just the way of the gig. So you cannot sit up here and be like, oh, woe is me, woe is me. It comes with the gig. You already have a mansion, multiple Hermes Birkins, Louis Vuitton, Gucci Chanel, millions and millions of dollars. God forbid people write blogs and talk about you and you get upset about it. That's just the gig. When you're a celebrity, it just comes with it. People are going to talk about you when you post your life online. I can't get upset if I'm over here living my life on the internet and people want to pick apart my looks in my makeup. I can't get upset about it. That's just the gig, girl. And it gets, oh girl, I'm so, I'm so heated right now. Check it out. She says, I never really stood up for myself because I was scared to lose my following and career. I dealt with hate channels trying to cancel me every day and spread lies and hate about me to the world. I laid in bed at night, scream crying because I was so sad that people didn't know the real me. This led to excessive drinking, binge eating. Don't blame that on us. Do not blame media on that. If, if you have the opportunity to just sit down, 
What's up guys to the people who afford you these Hermes Birkins and million dollar mansions and hundred thousand dollar cars. What's up guys and just shoot the breeze, but you don't do that. You're, this is so interesting. I have, I'm at major receipts. If you made it this far in the video, leave a snake in the comments, girl, because it's going to get good. When she says, I laid in bed at night, scream crying because I was so sad that people didn't know the real me. This led to excessive drinking, binge and eating. Peter Mom posted this little clip. I'm going to show you the clip because he was like, okay, what did these hate channels, commentary drama channels do that made her scream cry in bed, right? So Peter Mont went back, look at the major topic. Here we go, roll it. <laughs> Jacqueline, I went in and I took a look because I wanted to see what were the major Jacqueline Hill stories that have been covered in the last five to six years. And these were the stories that I came up with, okay? That have you in bed scream crying at night. Morphe palette releases, okay? And that there was a palette that was leaked early. Your mystery box flip fiasco, that was your problem because you didn't order enough. The Marlena Stell drama, that was your issue because you pulled out too early. Lipstick Gate, which after all these years, we still don't have conclusive answers to, and the supposed six scientists that you hired for over $100,000, okay? And now you make jokes about it. The Cozy Wear brand, which would just happen in the last six months, where you allegedly borrowed somebody else's name who asked you to reevaluate your content and your title of your name, and you have yet to even address it to even just, this is gonna stop, hold on a second. Okay, but you have yet to even address the fact that this poor girl changed her whole name, took down, rebranded and everything, okay? Like you have yet to even discuss that and act like it ever even occurred that this girl exists out there. Um, wearing a canceled dress to a Halloween party to make fun of being canceled. So don't talk to us about being canceled when you were making fun of it yourself. Rubbing your forehead with a $100 bill at a dinner party, okay? Basically talking about how rich you are. Um, fans not happy about the cozy prices, which they weren't, and they asked you, and you upped the prices of the pajamas, okay? Not disclosing affiliate links. Now, this has been an ongoing story through the years that I have covered and many other people covered. I believe it started with Sam from Here for the Tea. She was one of the very first people to cover this story, and it has continued to exist to this day. You refuse to disclose affiliate links and say that they are ads, and this is for you a way that you make money, something you would not do if you weren't making money off of it, Okay? Complaining about Instagram views, which you do on a quite regular basis, and most importantly, the many times that you have gone off on fans and said that fans are mean to you, that they're bullying you, and that you have to block them and delete comments, okay? Those are the stories that most of the drama commentary channels have covered through the years. I don't know where a lot of that is real personal that would have you laying in bed. My advice to you would make, be make a list, and I can send you my note of that, of those things that we have covered through the years where we are just informing your consumer of who you are as a beauty influencer that's making millions of dollars a year. Despite the fact that in I watched probably 15 hours at least of Jaclyn Hill content researching this video, and like, are people criticizing her or whatever? Never heard of that once. I went back, I was watching videos in 2016. I was watching Lipstick Gate stuff. I was watching Jaclyn Hill Divorce Era stuff. And there was no mention of, like, that being any sort of reason. So then, upon the criticism of of Rich Lux from Michaela and Aguera, Jaclyn Hill decided to jump on Nick Snyder and Dustin Daly as well. Which is interesting because Nick Snyder and Dustin Daly are good friends with Jen Sherrard of Sherrard Cosmetics. See how like the whole world is like this web is a circle. You know what I mean? Like it just keeps coming back to the same thing. So these actions along with business practices, a loss of authenticity and a drive for wealth, general dishonesty and an inability to legitimately look at criticism and making a joke of it have shaped Jaclyn Hill into this sort of untrustworthy internet figure that people do not jive with anymore and it instead has fixated on the useless criticism regarding her weight her looks maybe the sound of her voice things like that and decide to fixate on that as a means of deflection which to my feeling is just as evil as that useless criticism because then you are saying the people that care and wanted you to succeed by addressing these issues and addressing these topics are useless to you and mean nothing to you that's what it feels like. If you will not even acknowledge true criticism as something that matters and instead try to fixate on either if a super serious situation, the few good good people that were like, oh, it's still fine, or how much you despise the people that oppose you, then there's no true nature of actually being sorry. At least that's how I feel. And that, ladies and gents and NB besties, 
ends our video. To conclude this absolute monster of a video, I want to thank those who stuck in this far and the sponsor for this video, Aura, because with all this work, I'm happy to at least cut some sort of check. <laughs> Links, sources, Amazon, Patreon, YouTube memberships, ways to support the channel, including the aforementioned affiliate links are all down below, along with an email to suggest longer form content. And I hope you have an amazing day wherever you are and you're looking forward to the meme at the end of this video because I sure am. Have a great day wherever you are and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. Sprite and cough syrup? Sprite, cough syrup. Sprite? Suck! Did you really think I was gonna do that? I might be an idiot, but I'm not stupid. Remember that. Don't do drugs. I'm not drinking lean, okay? Stop asking. I'm never gonna do it. I will drink my Sprite though, in peace. I'm not doing it. No!